All right, this is the weekly trade results uh, for tradethebear.com. We're working on the website, bringing things up to speed. So take time to take time to subscribe today and become a part of the Trade the Bear community. What we want to talk about today is why swing trade ETF options. We're going to take a look at the VIX and what is happening in the market. Where is the bear? Where is the bear is very important, and we'll get into that a little bit. And then results, look at our results for our small account, and then what to expect next week, ETFs and the overall market. And then a trade the bear update. Come join. So why swing trade ETF options? It's an opportunity to diversify. The um, Let me show you. Ah, there we go. So um, whenever I look at the different ETF, ETFs that I like to trade is uh, very important. The ones that we've come up with is uh, these particular ones. So this is regional banks, uh, the Qs, which is the NASDAQ, SPY, Home Builders, XLE, which is uh, energy, and then financials. So this can give us some diversification. Sometimes we'll have a few trades going short while other trades are going long. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see more of that as we go along. The, um, the other thing that's really nice is the bid ask. So when you go over here to your trade tab and you look at your option pricing for the SPY, You'll see that you you know right now our volatility is pretty crazy, but to have sixteen dollars and thirty nine cents to sixteen dollars and eighty seven cents for the twenty six two twenty six, um, you know at the money, and here we are on the weekend. Whenever we get to trading during the day, you'll see that the um, the, the bid ask becomes really tight, and that's true of all the ETFs. The other reason we like ETFs is we don't have to worry about earnings as much. Um, you don't need to, earnings aren't going to impact you. You have 500 stocks in the S&P 500. So the opportunity for earnings to impact uh, a particular trade is uh, minimized. The, um, the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to look at the VIX. So you'll see the VIX has a lot to do with what's going on with options. Pretty crazy what's happening right now with the VIX. Oh, hold on. There we go. So you can see we're at we're record highs. I mean, let's take this back to uh, 10 years, maybe. Get this out here where you can see it. <coughs> you know, we, we've never, I mean, in 10 years, we haven't seen the VIX at the level that it's at. And rightly so. I mean, there's a lot going on in the world, right, uh, as we speak. But usually I have down here around 35. I'll have a I'll have an alert whenever that whenever the VIX hits that I'm going to get out of all my uh, short trade. Usually I'm uh, short the market when that's happening. And when I start seeing this kind of movement here, this kind of movement here, uh, this kind of movement here, this is unprecedented. So um, can't trust it as much. Uh, but it is driving the volatility of the option prices through the roof. So when the VIX is high, options are expensive. When the VIX is low, options are not as expensive. So you have to have strategies that relate to the VIX and what's happening with the VIX. Get this out of here where we can see it better. So the next thing is, is, what is what's happening in the market right now? I mean, pretty easy to see. I mean, anybody who's watching the news can pretty much tell. Uh, we have a barometer that we use. Um, you'll hear me talk about where is the bear? Is the bear hibernating? Or is the bear feasting? Is the bear waking up? Why is this important? Well, we'll talk about that. And then um, let's look at the ES and how we do this. So to determine what's going on with the bear, what I'll do is I'll pull up the ES. And why the ES? Well, futures, 
It's the S&P 500. It's one of the most traded instruments in the world. And um, so what I like to do is I, I really like to dial into the weekly chart to kind of give me an idea as to how to, you know, how I should be trading. A longer time frame can tell us what we need to do in a tighter time frame. And you can see here, we just fell off the cliff right here. So this is part of it. So in looking at this, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the bear is feasting. <laughs> Matter of fact, I've even said to someone that it's feasting on the carcass of the bull at this time. Pretty crude, but um, it's pretty, um, pretty relevant right now. So when we look at these candles, so five of these candles, the daily candles, will be inside of, of the weekly candle. So this will help us in the Trade the Bear community to be able to determine how we're going to trade uh, and what types of trades we're going to take. Very, very proven, effective strategy that we have. And uh, as a result of you know, looking at the longer time frame to go to the shorter time frame. So the, the longer time, okay, so what is our next move? What are we going to do next? And we'll get into a little bit of that here, in a little, here shortly. I um, am probably going to look for this to happen. See how the market pulled down pretty hard, then it kind of it came up a little bit. And then pulled down again. Well, I had too much risk for this trade the day that it occurred to do the SPY, but I did some trades on a few of the other ETFs that I like to trade. The next, uh, the next thing we want to talk about is what's going on? How about our results? Why a small account? I've always wanted to do it. So uh, at the beginning of this year, I kind of set things up to where that could happen. And what we've done so far is we've started with 3,280 and we're up to 5,876.20. This week, though, we did not um, we did not do any trades in the smaller account. Uh, I had a little bit in my larger account. I had one contract, I think, on the XLF, and um, that was it. So we're seeing some pretty good results. We're primarily trading the uh, XLF with this because... When you look at the XLF, it's relatively inexpensive. So therefore, when we look at the price of the options, it's an affordable option for a small account. You know, right now, 139 to 285, that's eh, a pretty wide gap just because it's a weekend, but um, that'll tighten up. You look at these options during the week and you'll see that, the, you'll see that things are pretty tight. And then, um, go here what's next okay so what to expect next week the overall market let's look at it now there's a few things I like to look at I like to look at the ES the NQ the ZB the CL the uh, gold and uh, the dollar and uh, let's look at that right now so let's start with the ES well we can see the ES is down I thought we were I thought we were gonna hold this area here and uh, obviously, we did for a few days, uh, kind of, act, it acted like it was going to be support. Uh, but Friday, you know, triple witching on Friday, meaning that the options expired, uh, many of the options expired on Friday, uh, which causes uh, traders to basically give up and, <laughs> and do what they have to do instead of trying to fix it. Uh, now you're out of time, and it's going to get fixed for you. I... Um, you can see the support level that I've drawn down here. Let me show you where that's coming from. I think it's within five years. Yeah, you can see you can see here. You know, there's a top, there's a top, there's a top, there's a top, there's a top. So we hit our head on this quite a bit before we had this long run. Uh, boy, it sure looks like you know there's going to be a minor level here at the 2200, which is going to be an even number. Um, so watch that level, the 2200. And then watch this um, 2115 area, 2117 area. Uh, Going to be very important. So why do we look at the ES? The ES represents 500 stocks in the United States. Really a good barometer for what's going on in the overall market. So we want to always know what's going on with the ES. And then the next thing I look at is I like to look at the NQ. And see, usually technologies lead the way. Uh, we can see here we're forming a little bit of a 
we might be forming that same support area that I was expecting before. Um, so, you know, watch, watch this area and let's see what happens. Um, is basically what I'm going to be watching for and trading it accordingly. So let's take this back over to nine months. Uh, the next one is CLZB. Let's look at ZB. That's the bonds. Ah, looky there. We're starting to see the bonds go up and uh, as market goes down. Uh, some, of, some of the action that the Fed is committing now is going to make the bonds act pretty crazy. So watch for this. Um, usually if bonds are up, market's down. Can't always trust it, especially when the Fed is doing what they're doing at this time. All right, so then our Axis markets, which is oil, gold, and the dollar. You can see oil's down pretty hard. Had this gap right here when the Saudis, when Saudi Arabia came out and said, or OPEC came out and said they were gonna lower the price of oil, pretty much created this gap. So this gap's going to fill eventually, who knows when, but it will happen. Uh, so what is, what's happening with oil? Oil's down. What's happening with gold? Gold is down. So usually when, that, when this is happening, the dollar is going to be up. Dollar up here. Yep. So there you go. So we got dollar up. We have gold and oil down. So that kind of gives you a little indication of how you might want to trade. What do you want to do with gold and uh, what do you want to do with gold in, this, in these times? What do you want to do with the dollar in these times? Um, just something to look at, just to have a better understanding of what's going on in the overall market. We'll try to touch this uh, on a regular basis with our um, with our uh, video updates. So, what are we going to do with our trades this week? Let's go through and look at those. So, regional banks down. I'm going to be looking for this area to this area becomes resistance. So I'd like to see this come up, test this area. The potential for it to break through that area is not very good. Maybe it'll come down. We'll see. And then um, the cues we already looked at, same kind of setup. We're going to be looking for that to go up and then eventually pull down. Um, this is our low here, this candle here, so I'm going to be watching that level and see if it'll make its way back above it before I do anything. Um, the SPY, same thing, this is our low, I'm going to be watching that level right there. Again, watch it come up, go back over. Home Builders, this is the one I did get out of the trade right here uh, with the expectation that it would go up and then roll over. I'm not sure that the market's going to get that to happen or, or what's going to do, what it's going to do. <laughs> the um, energy kind of goes along with oil. Again, watching this low down here, the high on that low. Let's see if we can get some movement back up. And then financials, uh, same, same setup. We're going to be looking for a push up. But boy, look at these channels coming down. They're pretty serious. All right, so and, and I wanted to take a minute and give you an update on what we're doing with the um, Trade the Bear community. Um, I'm trying to build a trading community. I'd like to see a, a chat room where there's many people in there um, that are experienced traders and uh, you're learning from each other. Uh, we're going to have a free area. Uh, basically, that's going to be basic option trading, uh, free weekly videos. We're going to have some training videos uh, around basic option trading, and then an occasional webinar uh, in the member. And then once we get into the membership, we're going to see access to many years of trading experience uh, coming not only from me, but from others that are going to be a part of the team. And the chat room and the weekly webinars, you know, you'll have access to the chat room. And then daily trade watch, this is going to be what, to, what we're going to be looking at, how to manage our trades, and how to get in. Our trades and then coming soon I hope to have the one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring uh, for everybody so please subscribe become a part of the team uh, and help us build this community and uh, let's take some money out of the market thank you for your time